Alright guys, welcome back to my next Touch Designer tutorial. In this one, I'm going to quickly show you how to create a simple UI interface and in trying to recreate the connector light in Touch Designer. This is the experiment I did. You can check it on my website. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Before we start, as usual, I'd like to recommend some resources and my inspiration. You can take these as a reference. So the first one I'm going to show you is the commercial project from the studio Digital Phone. They've created a lot of amazing Connect Light art projects in China. At the same time, more importantly, they've shared their techniques and workflow in the summit of Touch Liner in 2019. The last but not least amazing studio called Wide Void in Germany. They've played with connected light system and created a lot of fantastic words for many years. I think these are really great resources for you. I do recommend you to spend some time and dive a little bit deeper and try to have a better understanding of it if you are really interested. So hope it will be helpful for you guys. Let's go to the touch liner. First, let's take a peek about our final network. The whole network was actually can be divided into three main parts. The instancing part and the other two parts are controlling the movement and the color of the connected light. We also have two little tiny sliders. If we go to the full screen mode, actually you can play with these two to control the color and the movement. So, okay. Let's delete everything and start from scratch. The first step is going to build our instancing network, but I'm not going to explain it too much because you can find a lot of tutorial about instancing on YouTube. First, we need to find a sphere, then connect to a node. Send this node to the geometry then bring up our uh, good friends light camera and send it to the render connect to our transform go to the background color turn the l4 to 1 and turn on the background. Connect to a new at the end, turn on the display. Then we can go to the sphere and turn down the radius to 0 0.1. Then give a material to our geometry. In this case, we were just using a constant. The next step is find our grid to duplicate our sphere. Connect to a node. And convert to the chop family to get our position data. Connect to a node. Go to the geometry. Go to the instancing page. Turn on the instancing and put our node 4 on the top of default instant operator choose the TX, TY and TZ right now I feel like our sphere is still too big so I turn down the size uh, to 0 0.02 and we can uh, make our columns to 30 and also make our size a little bit bigger to 2.5 and 1.2 this is the important step we need to let our grid facing down so we can choose our orientation to the zx plan so this is the standard instancing render pipeline 
in order to make it up and down so we need to go to the instanting page choose the uh, translate y and change that parameters the next step is build our movement so we choose the ramp so here is the tricky part we can check the information of our grid it has 600 points but in our uh, ramp uh, we have so many pixels we have to make these two match with each other so we can turn the resolution to 30 by 20 now these two are matched with each other connect to a newel and also convert to our chop family we don't need the alpha channel seems the RGB channel are the same so I just select the uh, R channel, it's enough. Connect to a rename. In case we mistook our channel, so we change our name from R to Y. Connect to a null at the end. All goes a little bit to our network. It's always a good habit to keep our network very clean. In order to make the effect, we need to change the type of the ramp from horizontal to circular and insert two point and bring down the alpha. Now, as you can see, if I change the parameters, the pattern is actually moving as what we want to see at the end in the top two. Then we can insert the merge and put our neural six into the merge. Here is another point needs to be mentioned. So first, when we convert the image to our top two, it is actually just grab one line of the image then connect to a shuffle change the method to sequence channels by name so we need to go to the crop and change the crop from row to full image so that we can get the full image data from the top now if I change the parameters, it is actually giving me all the data position in this top. The next step is go back to our instancing network and replace that TY with our new channel Y. This is how we use the top to control the movement of the sphere. It is already close to our final form. Now we need to change the view to put our lights in the middle of the scene. Then we can connect a mask to make the movement more obvious. You can check the previous operator. The range is actually from 0 to 1. So we can change our new range from 0 to 1.5. We need to keep our lights moving so we need to attach a constantly changing value so we find the constant then connect to a speed so if we change the value of constant in speed we can receive a value that is continuously going up and you can click the reset button to make the value go back to zero connect to a new again then referencing that value to our phrase now as you can see the light is actually constantly moving in order to create different movement we can copy our ramp and just change the type 
you can use any of it you can choose vertical and also you can choose horizontal and uh, copy paste a new one and choose radio and insert a uh, switch connect all the ramp to the switch this is how we change the movement if you play it with the index you can see the movement is changing from one to another and also you can turn on the blend between input when you change the inputs from one to another, it can blend the movement with different effects. Okay, that's the movement part. The next step is attach the color to our connected light. Since we already know how to use the image to control the movement, the next part will be much easier. The same logic, we just need to copy the ramp, the top part, and convert to the NUO to the top two to get our RGB information. Same here, we don't need the alpha channel. And go to the crop, choose the full image. Connect to a shuffle. And choose sequence or samples by name. So we can get separate RGB channel connect to a node at the end now we need to attach some color to our ramp in here I just quickly show you the idea in your case, you can choose the color whatever you like. So we need to change the color for all of them. And connect to our NUO to the merge and send it to our instance network. Go to the instance page 2 and choose the RGB. Now, as you can see, if I change the inputs, the color is changing from one to another. The final step is build our controller. You can find the slider, connect to a new, and click view active. The output value is from 0 to 1. But we have four inputs connect to the switch. So we can insert the mass in between and change the value from 0 to 3. In touch then uh, we're counting numbers starting from 0. So actually we have 4 numbers and referencing that value to the index of switch. Now I can use the slider to control the movement. Copy the slider again. Doing the same thing to control the color. Referencing that value to the index of switch 2. Now you are able to use slider to control the color as well. So this is pretty much all the things I want to share. What else you can do is 
you can go to the upper level, go to the log page of the container, and check our final output. It's called Nuo2. And change the background top. Now it's the background in the container too. Now I want to check it in the full screen mode. Make sure the borders are off and the opening size are setting to the fill. Hit the perform button. Now you should able to play it with the full screen mode. You can change the color and movement through two different sliders. Hit the escape key to go back to our network. You can make more sliders or buttons to make specific control. And also you can make a feedback loop at the end and try to see what will happen. Of course, the important part is about color and movement. You can add more operators in between to control the effects. For example, you can insert the blur. As you can see, if I change the pre-shrink filter size, so the transition part, the edge part will become more smooth. In this tutorial, I just introduced a very basic technique about how to Visualize the Kinect light in touch designer. There's a lot of possibilities there. I encourage you to check the resource I recommend in the beginning. It is really helpful. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Okay, see you in the next tutorial. Happy programming everyone. Take care.